This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today I'm going to show you a device well known to security professionals that can read the information off your access control badges while they're still in your pocket. We're also going to talk about how to defend against it. But first, we need to put all of this into context. Over the last few weeks, I've been showing you common flaws with RFID access control systems. In video 1040, I showed you why it's a bad idea to integrate the controller into the reader, because if all of these electronics were on the outside of the door, we could simply take the reader off the wall, bridge a couple of wires, and the door would open. Something like this. Then, in video 1052, I showed you why you need to encrypt communications between the reader and the controller. A little cell phone controlled ESP key can be used to capture and either clone or replay credentials. Something like this. Well, today we're going to discuss why it's important to encrypt the data that's on the card using a robust query response protocol. To drive the point home, I put together a device that can easily be concealed inside of a messenger bag. It's a cheap reader that has a big 10 inch coil inside. I wired it up such that it can be powered either with these eight double A's on the inside of the package or with this lithium ion battery pack from the outside of the package. And that's what we're going to do right now. We then have a tiny board that will record all of the cards that are presented to the reader and transmit them to my cell phone via Wi-Fi. Now, the maker of this coil advertises read ranges up to 36 inches, but my experience is typical read ranges about 18 inches with a standard 0.8 millimeter card. And we're actually going to try that right now. I'm going to put this at the far edge of my video range and the same thing for the card. They're roughly 16 inches apart, so I should be getting multiple reads right now. Now let me turn on my cell phone and refresh the browser. Okay, we can see that looks like six reads right there. And with this binary data you see right here, we could actually clone new cards. So what's the point of all of this? Well, imagine having this in your pack when you ask a building security guard for directions. Or how about stopping by the Starbucks across the street from the building you want to enter? you'd probably collect a half dozen credentials just waiting by the door. So the question becomes, how do you defend yourself? A robust encryption on the card with a query response protocol is the gold standard, but there are stopgap measures, things like these RFID blocking sleeves. Now they're actually a bit of a misnomer. They don't completely block the signal, but they will reduce the read range by about 75%. This one is metalized cardboard, and this one is metalized plastic. And I'm going to show that you can actually still read these while they are in the blockers. No problem at all reading this one, and no problem reading this one either. There is another possibility, and that is storing multiple cards together. When you store multiple cards together, they both power up at the same time, they transmit at the same time, and because multiple cards are transmitting at once, it's like gibberish to the reader. Let's try that right now. These cards that could easily be read while they were in the protective sleeves, we now see the read failed while they are together. So the bottom line here is that unencrypted cards are just asking for trouble. And if you are currently using them, it is in your interest to implement protective measures. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you do have any questions or comments about this, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.